<coughs> all right so we're going to look up uh, the assignment on bch and six element codes Okay, so let me begin with the first question. The first question says, you have to find k and g of x. What is k? k is dimension. Okay. And g of x is generator polynomial. For all narrow sums binary BCH codes, n equals 31 okay so you might wonder what narrow sense is narrow sense is exactly the kind of codes that we've been looking at okay so those are called uh, narrow sense and uh, i mean just just ignore narrow senses just to say it's specific uh, bch code so like i said the so the zeros so narrow sense implies zeros for p for a correct code Basically, alpha of s part all the way to alpha power 2t, where alpha is the primitive, okay, order of alpha is n. Okay, alpha belongs to some Galois field, order of alpha equals n. Okay, so this is the meaning of narrow sense. So, in fact, it turns out you don't have to start at 1, you can start at any other power. Okay, you can start with b plus 1, b plus 2, so on to b plus 2t for any b. So if you put b equals 0, it's called narrow sense. Yes? You just said all alphas will be primitive. So I have five different g of x for my, for the different alphas I take, right? Five different what? I have five, I have six different g Yes. So, uh, will I have to mention all of them? I mean, will I have to? Uh, I mean, each of them will give me a narrow sense binary BCS code with any particular. In respect of which, uh, relating school of degree 5 Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. So, so okay. So, let me answer this question. Let me answer this question. Okay. So, the dimension is easy to find without any knowledge of minimal polynomial or construction or something like that, right? So it's, it's okay to do that. But if you want to generate a polynomial, you need a specific construction with a finite field. Okay? So that's what you're saying. So which primitive polynomial are used for the construction? So you can pick any one, doesn't matter. It's enough if you do one. Because any other field is isomorphic to this field. So you just do some change and you come to this. Okay. So, so for dimension is very easy. Okay, so, so first thing you do is enumerate all the cyclotomic cosets multiplication 2 modulo 31 okay so if you do that you'll get 0 and then you get 1 2 4 8 16 you get 3 6 12 24 12, 17 then what 5 10 20 19 sorry 9 sorry 19 what? 5, 10, 20? 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 25, then 19, right? The last one will be 11, 22, 13, 26, 21. Okay. So you have these uh, minimal polynomials. So what you can do? So the best way to answer the G of X question is not to find the polynomial explicitly. So this this one you know it's like exactly e by x plus one. For these days you simply say m1 m1x just you call this as m3x m5x 
m seven x and m eleven x. Okay, these are all irreducible polynomials of degree five, and then some order you can take it depending on how it works out, and then you can make a nice table of uh, k, well, p, k, and g of x. Okay, if you fill out this table, how will the first entry be? For t equals one, you will have. What? You know how to fill out this table, right? T, K, G of X. For each T, you find the corresponding K. So it's better to start with T, G of X, and then K. Okay, so if you don't get confused a little bit, it's easy to do it this. But okay, all right. So if you want, let me write down this table. I see enough blank spaces, so I'll do that. T, K, G of X. T equals one. The roots are alpha and alpha squared. So G of X is the LCM of m alpha and m alpha squared, and both of them come as m one of X. And K is what? N minus degree of G of X. Okay, so degree of G of X is five. So thirty one minus five is twenty six. Okay, for two again, what will happen? It will be m one of X times m three of X. Maybe I called m three as m alpha plus three of X or something. It's just all the same. Okay. The uh, here will be twenty one and so on. Right? Okay. So you just fill it out like that. Okay. okay so that's the first question, <coughs> and then second question is very similar. Third question is a little bit different. Doesn't. Uh, so the third question is also the same, except that n is not a like thirty one or one twenty seven. It's n equal sixty five. Okay. So you have to first find and uh, find the field in which you have a Order 65 element. How will you do that? Okay, that's the only non-trivial part. So, if you want n equal 65, you want alpha in G of 2 power n such that order of alpha equals 65. Can someone find the smallest m for which this will be true? Well. Yeah, so so that's the idea. So 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 here, this is a nice form. So it's basically two plus six plus one, right? So two plus six plus one times two plus six minus one will be two plus twelve minus one. So if you have an element of order two plus twelve minus one, in that C, you will also have an element of order two plus six plus one. Okay, do you see that? So if you, what you do is you pick n equals twelve, and you take an alpha belonging to G of two plus twelve, which is primitive. So what does that mean? Order of alpha equals two plus twelve minus one, which is actually two plus six minus one times two plus six plus one, which is sixty-three times sixty-five. Okay, so what will be an element of order sixty-five? This implies order of sixty-three equals sixty-five. Okay, so you pick alpha plus sixty three to be an element. Okay, so that that's just for just to be sure what what to expect. But you don't really need to do this. Okay, so how do you figure out the dimension and all that without doing these things? All you need is a cyclic atomic coset under multiplication by two modulo sixty five. Okay, so you simply start with that. You start with zero, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty two. Sixty-four. Okay. Is that correct? Doesn't end that, right? Sorry. Sixty-three, and then sixty-one. It should go all the way to twelve. You know, it should have twelve. So it will be fifty-nine. Is that okay? Did I am making a mistake here? One twenty-eight mod sixty-five is what? Sixty-three, and then one twenty-six. Sixty-one, fifty-seven, no? Forty-nine. Yeah, thirty-three will stop. Okay, so this will also give you a hint as to what m should be. Okay, what is the hint there? From here, you can guess that m equals twelve is the correct thing to do. Also. Okay, so this is enough. The second part of the process is enough. You don't really need to know the explicit field in which it belongs. 
only if you want an explicit GFX you need that. Okay, otherwise you can simply work with the minimal polynomials and that's fine. Okay. okay. So then the fourth question. Okay, the fourth question is a very typical question, so let's uh, let's see that. Okay, so you, you have a n equals 31, t equals 2, bch code. Okay, it's used over a binary symmetry channel, whatever. And you have to decode a receipt vector r of x, which is x plus 7 plus x plus 30. Okay. And then that's the first part. Second part is. Okay, so how do you do these questions? What's the first step? Sorry? Find GFX. Do you really need GFX? I don't, I don't think you really need GFX here. See, see, and so the decoding part, you don't you really don't need GFX. The first step in the decoding is what? Syndrome computation. Syndrome is what? R of alpha, R of alpha part 3. Those are the only two syndromes that will be relevant here. And then you just follow the decoding method. So you know how to do this, right? So you have to form the equations and syndrome error locator polynomial, find error locator polynomial and then solve for the rules. But the first one is quite easy to do. In fact, you can do it by inspection. Why is that? I can quickly find the code word which is a distance to from this received word. So what will be that code word? All zeros. Exactly, right? So you can easily guess C hat of x has to be 0. Okay, why? The distance between 0 and this x power 7 plus x power 30 is actually 2. And I can claim that there will be no other code word which will be closer than this to the R of x. What will happen if there is some other code word which is closer than this? Then there will be a violation of the minimum distance. You cannot do it. Okay, so that way you can do it. But here you will be stuck. You do not have a very easy answer unless you are really smart with these polynomials or you know the polynomials you can't do this. So here you will have to do the actual decoding. Okay, so, so go back and make sure that if you given an RFX like this you can compute the syndrome, you can do the next step, find the error locator polynomial, go through the thing and make sure make sure you can do that, that's important. Okay. Yes. What is cyclic decoding? You can divide the G of X and then what? And then you still have to find the syndrome. What word is always a multiple of G of X? And you're saying remainder has to be the error. So if the weight of the remainder is less than 2, less than or equal to 2, yes, you can conclude something like that. Because you have a code word plus the remainder, but the weight of the remainder need not be less than or equal to 2. If it is not less than or equal to 2, then you can't conclude that. Okay. I don't know what the answer is for part B. Is it okay? Okay, so the first question gives you a special case of a BCH code where you can explicitly find the exact minimum distance, and fifth and sixth are like that. Okay, and uh, it's an interesting little. Uh, construction that I think the BCH code will violate the BCH bound as in it will not be tight. The BCH bound will not be tight. If you design for T error correcting, you expect a minimum distance equal to 2T plus 1. So for some values of T, if you pick them peculiarly depending on N, you can show for T error correcting minimum distance will be strictly greater than 2T plus 1. Okay. It is not a violation of the bound as such, it is just that the bound is not tight. Okay, so first and sixth are like that. Okay, I am going to skip that. Uh, okay, so seventh is for instance a question that showed up in a quiz. It is a very typical question. Okay, so you have uh, 15 comma 5 BCH code B equals 3. Okay, and you have a received vector which is something like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, and you have to find C cap. 
Okay, so that's a, again a very typical question. So here you have p equals 3, so you, you, you might be able to correct up to 3 errors. And it's just year 16, so you have to work it out, find out the syndromes, go through the exercise, and you'll get the answer. Okay? So that's 7. And uh, let's look at the 8th problem. Okay, so here you have to look at the n equals 7 r score over g of 8 with p equals 2. Okay, so this gives a lot of information. From here you can quickly say what g of x will be. So the r score g of x itself is quite easy. What will be g of x? Right, x plus alpha, x plus alpha squared, times x plus alpha plus 3, times x plus alpha plus 4. Okay, what will be? g of x. Okay, so that's in fact one of the questions. And they're asked to encode 1 alpha alpha squared. Okay, in fact, what is k? k is 3, right? So the message is of length 3. You have to encode this systematically. Okay, so you know what the procedure is for systematic encoding, right? So multiply by x bar n minus k, then divide by g of x. Okay, whatever reminder you get, you plug it into the beginning, you get a systematic encode. Okay, so that's that. And then, uh, part B, this is part A. Part B asks you to list the parameters of the binary expanded code. Okay, so over G of 8, the parameters are 7, 3, 5, right? So when you do binary expansion, what will happen? Each symbol in G of 8 is replaced by 3 bits. So n will become 21. K will become 9. What about D? Yeah, you can say greater than or equal to 5. Right? You don't know why it will be equal to 5 or not. So you have to check this, but greater than or equal to 5. So, okay, beyond this, it's difficult to say. Okay, so then you are asked to provide the binary equivalent of the code word corresponding to this. So you look at the code word. Go to the vector notation, replace each symbol by the vector notation, you will get a 21 bit uh, binary code. Okay. And then part C asks you to decode 0, 1, alpha, alpha squared, alpha part 3, 1, 0. Okay, so again, what's the method? You have the standard uh, Peterson method. Okay, so it's just e equals 2 g of 8, it's not very hard, it's quick to do. Find the syndromes form the equations, check the rank, it's at best you will have 2 by 2 matrices. It's, it's very quick to find the determinant is 0 or not, it's wrong way. Okay? So it's a typical uh, question. So let's see, the ninth question, also very very similar, it also showed up in the final exam. Okay, so we have to look at n equals 15, R S code. So, in case somebody says read Solomon code over G of 16 and does not specify the block length, you have to naturally assume the block length is 15. Okay, so, that's the maximum block length possible over G of 16. So, you just take it out. Okay. So, n equals 15 RS code over G of 16 and uh, t equals 2. Okay, so, this seems to be a okay. So, so you are asked to write down generate a polynomial and what's written down is a check polynomial. So what is a check polynomial? So g of x is going to be quite simple. It's going to be x plus alpha, x plus alpha squared, x plus alpha plus 3, times x plus alpha plus 4. The check polynomial is basically, I think I defined this, you may not have, may not have noticed this. It's basically x bar n plus 1 divided by g of x. Okay? So in this case, it will have a form like x plus alpha plus 5, x plus alpha plus 6, all the way to x plus alpha plus 14. It will also have x plus 1 here. So it will be all these things. And then you are asked to provide a parity check matrix for the code. Okay, so it's not very hard. We have, you know the standard parity check matrix. Okay, so it will be the parity check matrix. 1 alpha alpha squared all the way to alpha 14, 1 alpha squared alpha 4, 
1 I mean in our, in our group. So last row will be 1 alpha for 4 alpha for 8 okay so it will have 4 rows and 15 columns and then the final part asks you to decode a receipt vector so the receipt vector has been given you have to decode it Let's follow the procedure okay so the tenth question asks you to show that the dual of an RS code, you take an RS code and take its dual, you get another RS code. Okay, so how do you go about doing it? So what, what's the see remember RS code is a cyclic code, you know the G of X, how will you find the generator polynomial for the dual? Yeah, so so you have to find the H of X. Okay, so G of X is going to be, so suppose it is a T error correcting code, G of X is going to be X plus alpha, X plus alpha squared all the way to X plus alpha bar 2T, right? So, I am sorry? It is assuming that it is a cyclic code. Yeah, so N equals the maximum N that is possible. So, order of alpha equal to N. Let us assume. Generic RS code, you said it can be from. All it needs is some 50 consecutive nodes. Yeah. So it may not be from alpha. Let's see how it works. Okay, so so I don't know. Yeah, it may not be from starting from one. So I think that's the form it will take. Okay. So the first step is to find H of X, and that's going to have X plus alpha bar two T plus one all the way to X bar X plus alpha bar n minus two. Then it will also have x plus alpha bar n minus 1, which in this case, is it correct? Should have x plus 1, right? This should be n minus 1. Okay, okay and then you will also have x plus 1. Okay, it will also have the additional x plus 1. Okay, so that is how it works out. Okay, so the duals uh, generate a polynomial. Basically what? Yeah, so you have to do it carefully. So it's going to be x bar k times h of x inverse. Right? K is what? K is n minus 2t. Right? Degree of the generator polynomial here is 2t, k is n minus 2t. Degree of h of x will be equal to k. Right? Is that okay? And then you have x bar k into h of x inverse. So what you do then is you distribute the x bar k throughout and and rearrange it. You can find the zeros of the dual. That's the idea. Okay. So what happens is this will be like x bar k times those things, but I have to put x inverse, right? But then there are exactly k terms in this product. So you take one x each and distribute it to each of these terms. So you get something like one plus alpha bar two t plus one x, one plus alpha bar n minus one x times one plus x. Okay. So essentially, the zeros of the dual it's in some form. Don't worry about where the x is and all. The zeros of the dual are basically what you'll we'll have x plus 1 is there, so you have 1 and then you have sorry so alpha power 1 minus n would be what yeah, so you will have alpha and then you will have alpha squared all the way to n minus 2t minus 1 but okay. Okay, the last thing will be alpha power n minus 2t minus. It's alpha power minus 2t minus 1. But then you put an n in the front. I mean alpha power n minus 1. So you just put it in front so that you get a positive guy. And it will be in a proper sequence. So you go from alpha power 0, alpha power 1, alpha squared all the way to alpha power n minus 2t minus 1. So basically there are n minus 2t consecutive zeros in this in the dual. So the minimum distance will become n minus 2t plus 1 and the and the dimension of the dual is basically also 2p. Okay. 
so the dual will end up having parameters n 2t n minus 2t so which means and it's also a reed solomon code the way we define it's also mds and all that so in general what you can show is if you have an mds code some code that meets the singleton bound its dual will also meet the singleton bound okay so that's the general result you don't have to be so specific about reed solomon and all that at the mds level dual of an mds code is also an mds okay so you can't avoid that Okay, so the 11th question I'll skip, it's not, uh, the 12th is reasonably important. Okay, so, so let's say we look at, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll slightly reword the question. n equals 2 power n minus 1 r of score, so over 2 of 2 power n. Okay, and let's say uh, t of a character. Okay, suppose C is this code. Okay. The question asks you to show, so, so let's say this is C R S. Then you can also look at a C B C H, which is again n equals 2 power n minus 1, but binary B C H here as well. The question asks you to show that C B C H is contained in Okay, so you have to show this. Okay, it's, it's quite easy, it's not hard at all. Okay, so you have to look at the zeros of this code. What are the zeros of this code? Okay, so you have one, uh, oh, sorry, alpha, alpha squared all the way to alpha power 2t. What are the zeros here? Yeah, so you have to include the cyclotomic process, but definitely zeros are contained. So if you have a GRS of X, which is X plus alpha dot 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 X plus alpha par 2 T, right? What is G D C H here? Yeah, so G B C H is going to be L C M of that. M alpha x, M alpha squared x, dot 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 dot, M alpha power 2 T of x. So clearly you can argue from this that that implies G R S of x divides G B C H of x. Okay, so this is a very easy statement to prove. You show, you show first that x plus alpha has to divide G B C H of x. Okay, x plus alpha square has to divide gbch all the way till x plus alpha by 2t has to divide gbch of x and all these guys are relatively trained they don't have any common factor so the product of all of them has to divide the gbch of x and that shows grs of x divides gbch of x so what does that mean the code word represented by gbch of x see gbch of x is a polynomial the code word corresponding to it is also a code word of the reed solomon code but interestingly what what is what is happening there what is so nice about that code word? It has only binary coefficients. It has no non-binary coefficients. Okay. So this BCH code is also referred to as the subfield subcode of the reed solomon code. So we also knew this before. There are so many other ways of proving it. Just by definition, this is true, right? If you look at how we defined it, we said they are the same parity check polynomial. I'm saying I'll restrict the code words over binary. So clearly it has to be contained in there. There's nothing so great about it. But but usually people define these codes from the zeros point of view. Okay, we defined it from the parametric matrix, so it is obvious, obvious for us, but usually people define it from the zeros and you have to make these arguments to come to the conclusion also. Okay, so that's 12. Okay, so let's go to 13. It's a question that showed up in the finals. So you have alpha in G of 16 is kilometer. Don't expect very complicated questions in the quizzes, okay? So the quizzes will be just simple, straightforward application of what was done in class. Don't expect uh, these kind of questions. Well, I'm doing this just, to, just for completion, but these kind of questions may not, may not, are not so important for the quizzes. Okay. So the question gives you some parity check matrices and you have to find the minimum distance. 
Okay, the first one that's given is not zero zero one. So you have the identity matrix, and then you have the alpha squared, alpha plus three, all the way to alpha plus fourteen. And then you have alpha squared, alpha squared squared, alpha squared plus three, alpha squared plus four. Okay, so you have to find the minimum distance of this code. Okay, so you have to find the minimum distance of this code. Okay, and part B slightly more complicated. So you have a similar looking problem, but instead of two, you have three. Okay. So, how do you argue for the minimum distance? First one is three. Why is that? Second element. Second element is. Okay, so okay, remember uh, the argument again. You have to be very careful when you argue with the the parametric matrix for minimum distance. What is the definition? Minimum number of linearly dependent columns. This got nothing to do with the rank. Okay, so don't think of Gaussian elimination rank and all that. There's no connection. Okay, there is a connection in terms of the bound, but be very careful if you're using Gaussian elimination and all that. No warning. Okay, so you start with weight one. Can there be a code word of weight one? Clearly ruled out. No. What about weight two? Uh, from 1 1 to alpha plus 14 alpha square plus 14 we know there is nothing of weight okay. 2 now i think i take one of the okay. okay so that's the idea okay so you have to be careful in that you have to show that there is no code word of weight 2 okay so if the code word is supported only here so what do you mean by supported only here if these two are zero then i have a code word of the bch code and error correcting capability 2 so from the van der mond argument i know there's no code word of weight 2 then weight will be 3 Okay, so one error correcting BC is good, or whatever. One error correcting is some other. It's got two successive roots, so it like three. I think it's a code over GF16. I'm sorry, it's a code over GF16. It's not binary BC. Okay, but anyway, so I have two consecutive roots. Minimum distance will be three. But the only thing is, what if these guys are not zero? Okay, say so the first one is non-zero. Okay, then what happens? Okay, can I have a code word of weight two? Is it possible? Yeah, it's not. Don't work out. See, if if this one is, if this one is, say, suppose you have zero and something non-zero here. How do you argue? Sorry. Yeah, you can try a lot of things, but try to use what you know already. Okay, just don't keep re reworking it. If that is non-zero, then my Second parity check matrix is second condition is useless. You know, I mean, second condition is useless. But what about the first condition? It has to be fully satisfied, and there's there's no way you can have just one more guy being giving you that. Okay, so the first one will clearly violate that. Right? You have to at least have two non-zero guys. Right? So minimum distance will be greater than equal to three. Okay? And same thing works for the other way around also. The first thing is non-zero. Non zero zero also same way you can argue. But what if both are non zero? There should be at least one guy there, right? So again you argue that way and show that minimum weight has to be at least greater than equal to three. I mean it sounds a little silly at this, but be careful about that. All these steps are required, and you can't just say there is no code word of weight two. People will make that statement. It's true. I'm not saying no, but it needs checking, and you have a way of convincing me that you know what the arguments are. Not just saying that I know what the answer is. So okay. So here the minimum distance will work out to two, three. Sorry. How do you show it's equal to three? You can quickly find the this thing. One, one, one followed by hyphen for zero is a code. Okay. So minimum distance becomes equal to three. What about next step? Four, four. Just. Uh, 
Why Why four or like? It's not T, I know. Three consecutive rows. So four. Five, how can it be five, man? You have three rows. Any four columns will be linearly dependent. So, so it's four. If minimum distance cannot be greater than four. Okay. But I will you so okay, so you have four for that, and then how do you then you have to argue the remaining things? It's a bit more complicated, you know? It's not so direct. You have to argue for three weight. Uh, how do you argue that? Assume I take one of the vectors from 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and three of the vectors from 1. Okay, so once again I'll say try to use the consecutive roots argument as much as possible. It's clean and simple and convincing. Okay, you try to do your own reinventing of it, it will just go around and round and round and you'll get confused. Okay? So try to use to the best possible situation, try to use the consecutive roots argument. Okay? It's a very standard argument. Right? So if all these guys are 0, then clearly it's 4. If any one of them is non-zero, what will happen? You have consecutive roots except if this guy is non-zero. What happens when this guy is non-zero? Then you don't have consecutive roots. Okay, so it's okay when that day is non-zero here because in this case you have alpha and alpha power three, and the minimum the difference between those two powers is two, and two is relatively prime to fifteen, which is so. So even if this is zero, you will have a minimum weight three there. Okay, you can also show that other ways. You can think about it. So you, you will need a minimum weight of three for that part. Okay, so four will be fine. And then you have to worry about two days being non-zero here. Two days being non-zero is relatively easier. You will have one condition that will give you 4 and all 3 are non-zero will mean one more has to be non-zero so you will get okay so you have to do all these steps okay right so the next thing I would urge you to try it is not given as a question here try the 4 case okay put a i4 here identity matrix 4 and then go all the way down to alpha power 4 there it will not turn out to be 5 if I remember correctly so you can find I think the weight 4 code what is that Okay, go back and look at it. So it's not this is not a way to simply extend their minimum distance. It won't extend like a there is a it's not this place where it stops. Okay. So fourteenth and fifteenth are ways of adding an overall parity check matrix. Again, the similar method we hold. The way to prove the minimum distance for these constructions is by using a similar method. Okay. So you go if you if you give if you're given a parity check matrix which has the reach element structure as part of it and then something else is added to it you look at particular cases for those things and argue it out like this ok so this is a general thing you can do and uh, 14 and 15 are about that and 16 is about this polynomial evaluation idea ok so 14, 15 and 16 are really not uh, not too crucial so maybe I will discuss just 15 because 15 is a nice uh, problem ok so you have H being Parity check matrix of let's say an n k n minus k plus one or a score. Okay, and this is like a cyclic code. You have the parity check matrix. So it will have this form. Okay, so it will be one alpha alpha squared all the way to alpha bar n minus one one alpha squared alpha squared power n minus one all the way down to one. It will be the last power n minus k right n minus k square will go to alpha power n minus k ok so it's, a, it's an n k code it should have n minus k rows so from that itself we can say n minus k ok right this is h this is h and then you are asked to consider a parity check matrix uh, which is not exactly h But you take this edge and then you do this. You take a 1 here followed by all zeros and then you put zeros here and the last one is 1. Is that clear? So your graph length has become n plus 2. Okay? Your rank will remain, <coughs> remain the same. Okay? 
So this will still be n minus k. Okay. So the dimension will become will still remain k. Oh no, dimension will go to k plus k plus two. Okay. Is that okay? So you have an n plus two comma k plus two code. What is the minimum distance? Is the question. Okay. So here d equals n minus k plus one. This part has n minus k plus one. There's no problem. Okay. So if you have zero zero here, it's easy to argue that every code word has to have at least weight d. Okay. What if one of these is non-zero? Okay. Then you say that the rest of my code word, leaving this out, has to satisfy d minus one. D minus two consecutive zeros, right? Starting from alpha all the way to alpha bar, n minus k minus one, right? If this k is non-zero, the last parity check matrix need not be satisfied. The last parity check need not be satisfied, but from the first to n minus k minus one has to be satisfied. So one to d minus one. So your, the rest of this rest of this code word has to satisfy d minus one consecutive roots. So which means its weight should be at least greater than or equal to. D. Yeah, d minus two, so you have be d minus one. So d minus one plus one will become d. Again. Okay. The same way you can argue for x zero also. What we do is again you have d minus two consecutive roots. So that part has to have weight d minus one, and already you have one here. So d minus two plus one becomes d. d minus. Ah, there's also a plus one here. Yeah, okay, so both sides. Anyway, I mean, think about it carefully. So, the next argument is what if both of these are non-zero? Then you have a d minus three consecutive roots. So the minimum weight there will be d minus two plus these two guys will make it d. Okay. So we have put the one strategically so that whatever happens here, you have consecutive roots. Okay. In the previous thing, that will be a problem. When I do this, there is a middle thing I have to account for. Okay. If I ask, but the common difference relatively prime to n is okay. But if I put four, then you can have situations where the common difference will be three, and it will not be relatively prime to fifteen, and that will not give you minimum distance guarantees. Okay, some crazy things can go wrong. Okay, so you have to be careful here. So, but this is this is a regular extension method. You can extend up to two and get the same minimum distance. Okay. Okay, so this is like an extension, right? So typically, when we extend, we put all ones here. You can also do some all one kind of extension. That's also done, but this is not all one kind. Right? Okay. So for instance, fourteen is the all one type extension. So fourteen says we have C being a uh, RS code uh, with zeros. Alpha, alpha star, alpha star, alpha, alpha star, d minus one. Okay, so it will have d minus one consecutive zeros. Minimum distance is d. So what you do is you make a c cap. So you make a c cap, also c e, an extended version, which has u one, u two, all the way to u n, and then you have a u one plus one. Okay, such so that u one, u two, u one. Belongs to C, and then what? You basically extend. You say u n plus one is u <laughs> n plus u two plus one to u n. Okay. So you have to find the parameters of C. Okay. All right. So two parameters that are easy are n plus one and k. Right. These two are easy. Why is it easy? N plus one is very easy. Why is it still k? It's just u n plus one is another parity. That's not a message. Okay, given the message, message bits of C, we'll find all the u n through u n, and then from there you can find u n plus one also. It's not a new message bit. It's a parity bit, so it still be k. What about minimum distance? Greater than or equal to t. Okay, see in the binary case we can't say too much, right? If it's a binary code, if the weight is odd, it becomes d plus one. The weight is even, it is still, it could remain. D, but it turns out for the Reed Solomon code, you can say whether it's even or odd, minimum distance will be D plus one. Even odd doesn't matter. Okay, the reason is 
let's make a parity check matrix for the extension okay so the, the crucial argument is always the parity check matrix okay so we have one part which is one alpha all the way to alpha part n minus one one alpha square all the way to alpha square part n minus one the usual each element part goes all the way to d minus one and then you have the extension what is the extension doing? I'll put the un plus 1 in the beginning. You can also put it at the end, it doesn't matter. I'm putting it in the beginning. We'll have a whole bunch of zeros and then you have a 1 and then this will be okay. Or how do you argue the d plus 1? So if the first is 0, see if this location is 0, what happens? I have d consecutive roots. Why do I have d consecutive roots? Alpha plus 0 just got added as a root. And this is 0. This guy corresponds to 1 alpha plus 0, alpha plus 0 square and so on. So from alpha plus 0 to alpha plus d minus 1, I have d consecutive roots. The weight will be greater than or equal to d plus 1. Now if this is non-zero, what happens? I have d minus 1 consecutive roots, but that part will be weight d at least and then you also have the first part which is non-zero so it becomes d plus 1 okay, the same extension argument you can use to go to d plus 1 okay so even as d is even this extension overall parity extension for a non-binary dch for a reed solomon code will increase minimum distance by 1 okay so this can be used sometimes sometimes people use this they like this extension a little bit for uh, various reasons Is all right? Okay. So, I think uh, this is, these are all the questions that I wanted to do for today. Uh, we will stop here.